You've probably seen or at the very least heard of Murder Drones and its creator Liam Vickers. As of writing the script, it currently has 7 episodes and with over 167 million views combined, it's fair to say that it's been a huge hit for Glitch Productions, the people that brought it to life. But what if I told you that it wasn't the first time Liam tried creating an animated series? Cliffside is a 12 minute long western animated pilot created by Liam Vickers in 2018. It's about a cowboy called Waylon, his partner Joe, and a spider girl called Cordy. It follows them and their encounters with the unconventional evils that surround the town of Cliffside, and whether or not Waylon will actually learn anything. But before I talk about Cliffside, let's talk about the man who made it, Liam Vickers. Liam Vickers is a writer, director and storyboard artist who in 2018 graduated from the University of Southern California's Animation and Digital Arts program. He was born in Phoenix, Arizona, but then he and his family moved to Conifer, Colorado when he was one year old. He later moved to Los Angeles to focus more on storyboarding and writing. He first got into writing when he was 8 years old when he wrote a story called The Adventures of Wally the Rollers and Bobby the Raccoon. Roughly around the same time, or maybe a few years later, he got into animation for a combination of making stick figure animations using Pivot Stick Figure Animator and an obsession with visual effects for home videos. This would lead him to pursue an animation degree when he went to college. It's worth noting that the dabbing stick figure on his website could be alluding to this part of his life. In 2013, he started a channel called Scary Storytime with Liam, where he would read aloud his scary stories, or creepypastas, to use the internet slang term. He also put his music up on the channel and on his SoundCloud for people to listen to. In 2020, he announced he would stop making content for the channel, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Prior to making Cliffside, Liam was in the process of making Let's Split Up, which is about two shape-shifting Wendigos called Dee and Clyde. Human arms don't bend that way. Which way? All of the above. It was on track to have a fully animated pilot animated by a small studio, but the deal ended up falling through and it was scrapped. And only a 1 minute 51 second long animatic and a 2 minute 20 second long sequence remain, but there are several bits of front end work that Liam intends to make viewable in the future. So without further ado, let's talk about Cliffside itself. It starts with hijinks with Waylon and Joe, then after the title shows up, it cuts to Joe and Waylon at the site of a train crash. Joe leaves Waylon to it, but Waylon tries to find his revolver. He then gets caught in a spider's web and comes across Cordy for the first time. He escapes her web, then comes face to face with Yanis and death itself. He stands up for Cordy after they belittle her, and Cordy returns the favour and saves Waylon and herself by softening their fall. Waylon teaches Cordy how to be a gunslinger, but it gets out of hand when Cordy robs a bank. Death itself reappears and takes on Waylon in a standoff. This results with Death itself becoming the sheriff of the town, after being told that him being in charge would mean less dead people. He didn't learn a thing. There are several characters in Cliffside, but there are only five that get enough focus for me to adequately talk about them. So let's go through those five. Firstly, there's Waylon. Waylon, or 2-Bit Jerry to use his outlaw alias, is the protagonist. He is arrogant, dishonest, and self-centered. He dreams of becoming an outlaw, but is held back by his cowardice, swagger, and poor marksmanship. But is shown to be kind of sympathetic in certain situations like when he stood up for Cordy. Ah, put a lid on it. She was gonna eat me just fine till you guys showed up. Did it ever occur to you maybe I can do more than just stand watch? Wait, you mean me? Who? He also has some charisma to him, like when he convinced Death itself that becoming the sheriff would mean less dead people. You know, technically, you being our sheriff and protecting the town would mean less dead people and less work for you if you think about it. Next is Joe. Joe Constance, or just Joe, is one of Waylon's acquaintances. And I say that because based on the way they interact with each other, they're unlikely to be friends. Nothing suspicious about mentioning that, specifically. She is apathetic, fearless, and mysterious. In the intro, Waylon calls her Honest Joe because she never tells a lie, which is true. You're bad at this. Most of the time, she has a deadpan expression and voice. But after seeing Waylon during the bank robbery, she gets so angry that she puts on a southern accent. What in tarnation is going on? 
Oh god, she's gone southern. Also, they're not siblings. As Joe says, my dad, not our dad. Yeah. Waylon, my dad needs you. And here is Cordy. <laughs> Cordy is a very weird character in both the way she looks and the way she behaves. One minute she's being a cinnamon roll, and the next she's being horrors beyond comprehension. Her relationship with Yanis also shows that she's a bit of a pushover, and all too submissive. But after Wayland stood up for her, she returns the favour by softening that fool, and taking out Yanis in the process. After which she develops a huge obsession with Wayland and wants to be just like him. I want to be just! Like you. As shown in the montage, she is a fast learner being able to quickly learn how to use a revolver and is able to use four at once thanks to her claws. When death itself returns, she hides with Waylon who's holding her by the shoulder, which he considers as an act of affection, and in return she embraces him and punctures his right eye. Female spiders do this to communicate to their mate that they want to lay eggs, and after doing so, the female eats her partner. Yeah. <laughs> Waylon has every reason to be put off by her. She was taken aback after Waylon told her that he made everything up, but quickly forgot about it, and if it were to continue as a full series, they would tend to learn from each other's experiences, and this would make them inseparable. Ugh, ouch. But more importantly... <laughs> that was nifty. Next up is Yanis. Well, what do we have here? Yanis is a pterosaur, the modern ancestor to the pterodactyl. She's bratty, sadistic, cruel, and her voice does not match at all. Looks like Cordy finally caught something other than flies. She doesn't view Cordy as a friend and mainly uses her for her own ends, mainly as a way to get an easy meal. So how about you hand over the little cowboy? She also gives her death threats to prevent her from coming near her nest. Come near my nest to scavenge for food again and I'll rip your tiny head off. And finally there's death itself. Death itself is the main antagonist in the pilot. He's quiet, laid back, but full of malice. Ironically, he prefers less work and less deaths because he takes up the role of the Sheriff of Cliffside. He only communicates in fly buzzing, and only Yanis and Cordy can understand what he is saying. <laughs> nice. Okay, my horrendous buzzing of flies is a little rusty, but I think he wants to bit Jerry's... hat? Scarf? It's possible that he and Waylon improved their relationship after this, based on an art piece showing Death and Waylon bro-fisting each other. As stated before, there are other characters besides those five, but there is nothing to say about them. So let's move on. The animation and art style. Despite Lee being a board artist and not an animator, I have to say that the animation is quite good. It was animated in Toon Boom Harmony. The reason Liam used it is because it was something that would allow him to produce fast quality animation. It's not the greatest, and it is a bit rough around the edges, but to be fair to it, there are some amazing shots, especially during the third act. The art style is also very pleasing to look at, with a nice colour palette, and the backgrounds are also very well drawn but I think Liam just has a really good art style in general. The voice acting. There's not much I can say other than the voice actors, as listed here, all did a fine job. The music. Despite being a composer himself, Liam contacted someone else to make all but one piece of music for Cliffside. The score was done by Jesper Ankerfeldt, a Danish composer based in Copenhagen and Los Angeles, with Emily Peterson on the soprano, Andrew Rudman on the trumpet, and John Graham doing the country vocals. And they provide an excellent score, I think. My favourite piece of music is a dangerous montage, but it's mainly because of the vocal guitar. Cliffside was in production for a year and a half, and four months of that was spent animating it. And as such, many things were left on the cutting room floor and didn't make it into the finished product. The original plot was also radically different, but before I talk about that, let's go over some of the smaller things I want to mention. Wayland and Joe have canon ages. Wayland is 15, Joe is 16, and Cordy doesn't have an official age. There are three versions of the thumbnail, one with Cordy in the background and Wayland in the foreground, one with just Cordy, 
and the current version, which looks similar to the second version. Joe is the only main character to have a surname. Cordy's species is unknown, and while she has spider abilities like making webs, she's more of a monster than a spider. A trip to Yosemite Valley would provide Liam inspiration for the setting. Quote, I always loved monsters, and a trip to Yosemite convinced me there was some fun to be had with an isolated western town. End of quote. Joe's dad, who simply goes by Reverend Constance, originally played a larger role, but was gradually written out and reduced to an unseen role. Quote, Joe's full name is Joe Constance, her father simply going by Reverend Constance. He's the town's feared and revered minister who rules with an iron fist and very backwards views. Witch trials, stonings, burnings, etc. But it's a total spineless wimp around his daughter he can't really connect with. He was a big part of the earlier drafts of the pilot script and animatics, having a father-daughter bonding arc with Joe, but was steadily written out from the episode entirely. He is still canon to the series and will appear in future episodes, however. He was roughly designed for storyboards, but I haven't released any artwork of him. The blonde posse member at the bank is simply an identical character, though for the purpose of keeping things organised in the animation files, I named him Dan McJaw. The taller lanky dude is Jesse Langman, and the guy hiding behind the wagon is Rufflin Bill. End of quote. Death's extra arms were done in 3D rather than 2D. The earliest trace of Cliffside's existence I was able to find is on Liam's DeviantArt, which is one of the backgrounds. It was published on the 17th of May 2017. Cliffside started a trend for Liam Vickers' works to have its three core characters consist of one male and two females. See Intonesian Cube, see Murder Drones. Cliffside also started a trend of breaking the fourth wall. Wayland says to Joe that he shot 50 monsters in the intro sequence. Remember how this town is surrounded by monsters? Yeah, what do you mean? I shot like 50 in the intro sequence. 50. In Intonesian Cube, Icon remarks how dumb it is to bond over something like bacon and eggs. You know how cringe trying to bond with me over this menial thing is, right? I know you can make faces with objects. I'm still going to reduce you to atoms the minute this problematic power dynamic is over. And in the first episode of Murder Drones, there is a slide on Uzi's PowerPoint presentation about the protagonist's journey, a scene where Ed detects that Uzi has plot armor, and at the end, Ed says this. I'd join you if the sun didn't kill me. Hope you're having important character growth or something though. And in episode 4, Cabin Fever, the calendar Uzi reads says that they made evacuating all dogs canon. And chapter 14 of Emily's survival guide says that splitting up just means more runtime and more work for production. In every one of his animated works, Liam has voiced at least one character. In Let's Split Up, he voices Clyde. In Cliffside, he voices Waylon. In Intonesian Cube, he voices one of the agents and Mr. Fisher. And in Murder Drones, he voices Riley, the teacher, and Trevor. Cliffside takes place in the year 1865, five years after the formation of the Pony Express, and four years before the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, although Liam has mentioned changing the year date to 1840 at some point in the future. While it's never mentioned, the trio work and live in the saloon that Joe's father owns. There is concept art of a gunslinger Cordy on Liam's Tumblr. It's likely that if the pilot got picked up for a series, there would have been a status quo change, and it would have become Cordy's main outfit. The reason why Waylon wants to be an outlaw is because he has a family member who is one, and aspires to be like them. This was originally going to be his dad, but he was written out of the canon, so it's just a family member. After making Cliffside, Mr. Vickers would post updated expression sheets for the main trio and art of some of the monsters that you'd find in and around the town. A chopper camera was planned to be in the pilot. In the Tumblr post, he says, quote, In early drafts of the pilot, Yannis had a chopper camera best friend named Eris that rode around on her back instead of death. He, uh... He was also brutally murdered by Cordy. Rip in pieces, spooky doggo. End of quote. A creature called a siren was planned to be used in a future episode. Quote, This fella was part of a speculative future episode in which Waylon, as the self-proclaimed love guru of Cliffside, tries to wingman a siren out of its dry spell funk by setting it up with Joe. Naturally, she isn't interested in doing anything but putting the ting's head on a stake. But along the way, Waylon and the creature realise their almost eerie commonalities and develop a total like-minded bromance. By the time Waylon realises perhaps he was the true target all along and has been manipulated into isolation from his friends, it might just be too late. End of quote. The pilot's plot was originally going to be a lot different and would have focused on Waylon and his dad. Quote, 
Blueberry Bill is likely cut from canon for good. Waylon does have a family member who is a true outlaw that he aspires to be, and this character also plays into the mystery of Cliffside, but this likely won't be his father. This is still in development. In the very early drafts of Cliffside, and no longer canon, the series focused on Waylon and his dad, Blueberry Bill, as they attempted a train heist to steal a mysterious crate. Blueberry Bill was indeed a notorious outlaw, as well as manipulative and reprehensible, using Wayland's need for validation to put his son in extremely dangerous situations for his personal gain. When the heist went wrong, Blueberry left Wayland behind as bait to escape, stealing the crate himself. Upon capture, Wayland bore the full brunt of the punishment for his father's crimes, though too young to be hung from the gallows, was instead exiled to Cliffside. This was the cold open for the episode and the story picked up months after, with Waylon already knowing Joe and Cordy, and with Death itself already being the sheriff of the town. The episode would have focused on Blueberry's return to Cliffside and Waylon's struggle to make his father proud without betraying his new friends. Pieces of this may still be used in the future development, but as of now, nothing is decided for good." End of quote. An 8-bit Cordy sprite is Liam's avatar on all his social media platforms. And there's also an animated version of it. You just have to know where to look. On the 1st of November 2023, a mini Q&A was held in the official LVA Discord server, and someone asked Liam if he had any ideas for future Cliffside episodes. He answered with, quote, I think the only future episode I really blocked out beyond the basic premise was one where we had some terror bird bandits hijacking a train transporting this suspicious as hell spooky safe, with some unknowable horror inside. Death was going to recruit Waylon, Joe and Cordy to stop the birds from leaving Cliffside with the cargo, lending our trio a very angry undead Yanis as a begrudging ally and means of transport to catch the train. The plan there was to kind of set up the overarching series mystery, Death as the Sheriff having suspicious missions for our hero posse, with its true motives being unknown, but probably not great, as well as Death's rivalry with the wacky deer monster, Miasma, and its own sneaky plans, that are also probably not great. That was the concept at least. End of quote. In a YouTube community post made a year after the pilot came out, Liam said, Wish me luck as I whisper spooky cowboys into Network's ears, meaning that he was probably preparing to start pitching the show. In an update video from 2020, Liam said that Cliffside is far too ambitious for him to make it his spare time, and it would not be continuing at this time, at least not by himself. In the same video, Liam said that he and a small team are going around pitching it to various networks and production companies for full-scale support for any future episodes, but said that it was a long process with little chance of success, and given the amount of time that has passed, it's likely that it didn't go down very well. It has been suggested that Liam never intended for Cliffside to continue. In the same update video, he said this. All that considered, the pilot was always meant to be a standalone taste of what I could do as a creator and the type of show I might create if given the chance and proper funding, rather than a specific project I actually had plans to continue. But due to the massive support it got, he changed his mind and sought to find ways to continue it, but so far has not yielded any results. After making Cliffside, Liam eventually landed a job as a PA for Nickelodeon working on Glitch Tax, which was his first job since graduating from university. It was released on the 21st of February 2020, shortly before the world shut down for five months. He eventually landed a job as a storyboard artist and credits Cliffside for furthering his career up to that point, and in his free time he'd practice his boarding. It was during this that he created Intonation Cube as a practice sequence to push himself and see what he could do, but after the positive reception it got, decided to continue it with a total number of 6 episodes planned out, but as of writing the script, it's currently standing at 3, half of what he had planned. 5 days after making part 2 of Intonation Cube, he announced on his SSTWL channel that it was being retired, with no new content being made for it. 
At some point, sometime in late 2020 I imagine, Liam pitched murder drones to Glitch Productions, an Australian indie animation company based in Sydney, New South Wales, owned and run by the Ludwichical brothers, Luke and Kevin, who were seeking to find someone who could create a show with more edge compared to what they had done previously. <laughs> Because they're mine now. A pilot was put into production with a teaser for it dropping on Liam's YouTube channel on the 25th of June 2021. The trailer came out on the Glitch channel on the 8th of October 2021, and the pilot dropped on the 30th of October 2021 to overwhelming praise and gave the Glitch channel a much needed subscriber boost and became the most viewed video on the channel, only to be dethroned by the Amazing Digital Circus's first episode. On the 12th and 13th of November 2022, the second episode, named Heartbeat, was screened early at the Terragram Ballroom in Los Angeles and the Cornerstone Brewery in Berkeley, California, before being released on YouTube a week later, thus allowing Liam to finally achieve his goal of running his own show. Unfortunately, production of the first season has been agonisingly slow, with the episodes being released over the course of over two years. No thanks in part to the show's visual style, being much more photorealistic than anything Glitch has made before and after it. As for Cliffside, the best way to ensure it's able to continue is through murder drones. Quote, Supporting this show is the best way to ensure I can continue to make content of all kinds, and that dead series aren't destined to remain as such. I need a team, I need to excel as a showrunner with studio backing, not an independent creator. End of quote. On a semi-related note, he also said this at the end of the Q&A, quote, The show is still something I think totally works. Could be updated, but you know, generally I think it's still fun, haha. <laughs> it's exciting to me, and I would love to make more content for it someday, even if it's just sketches or short ideas. Just a matter of what the future brings or what form I can get those ideas out, when or if I can, end of quote. If you haven't seen Murder Drones, I think you should give it a chance because it's one of the highest quality animations Glitch Productions has made so far, and it might just be Liam's magnum opus. So if you want more from Liam, then check out Murder Drones, and if you enjoyed that, you might enjoy the rest of the Glitch catalogue. Just lower your expectations before doing so. In conclusion, Cliffside is pretty darn good. It's funny, charming, has a great score, and is overall fun with a good amount of rewatchability. If this video has convinced you to check it out along with Liam's other work, I've created a playlist for it, which you can find in the description. And that's pretty much it. Bye.